so first I think it's important you guys understand this is a conservation success story. We stop here because this is awesome. Right? A lot of times we hear about declining species, declining species, declining species, which is a real thing. We should be talking about that. That's an important thing to focus on. But we also have success stories. This is a success story. So as you'll hear in a few minutes, these uh, elephant seals um, were very close to extinction, right? Reduced to essentially an island or a couple islands off of Baja, off of Mexico. Um, since then, so, so completely exploited by European powers, 100% targeted. They come on the beach to, to give birth, and so they, they um, you know, very vulnerable, etc. So we knocked their population down. Then we thought they were extinct. They have since recolonized. So an example, when we reduce the exploitation pressure, many times populations can recover. If the ecosystem, if the other elements are intact, they can oftentimes recover. Not always. Sometimes we have phase shifts, community shifts, but, but they can't. So, so these guys started repopulating the California coast, which is great. Uh, the main act that's influencing these guys now is the 1972 uh, Marine Mammal Protection Act. Um, there's, all, there's other things too, but that's, that's the main one that affects any marine mammal. That's mostly pinnipeds and whales, um, but also includes uh, 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 dugongs, manatees and stuff, and uh, sea otters and polar bears, because they touch the ocean, right? Um, so anyway, so these guys expanded and it's great. So Anya Nuevo, which is north of us, is a historic epicenter of their population, they started expanding and so in this case in the late 90s these guys started showing up here and they um, started expanding and as we'll hear from from our guides they um, started just setting up these satellite populations right and so uh, here because the same reason that we're worried about the re re realignment of PCH right also um, we would normally think of as a risk but it's also a risk for these guys Right, so they have now, so when they start, when they established the, you know, first started coming down here in the 90s, um, and as Brenton will say, and as, we, as we'll see in the next stop when we talk about the restorations, those, uh, I'm just getting these guys context for you guys, before you, before you go, uh, is, um, is that proximity is the issue, right? The proximity of the land to the sea, all that, that interface. And so, so it's both leading to erosion, but it also means that these little, these areas of Brenton surveys for tidewater gobies and all that kind of stuff, right? It, it, they're very, very close. So when these big honking marine mammals want to come inland, they kind of, uh, 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 they come inland, right? And so they were starting to, you can see right here, the water is super close. There were some points where they were actually coming up onto the roadbed. One, two, they were becoming an attractive, what you'd say in the legal circles are is an attractive nuisance. So we talked about the heavy, heavy traffic that this, when PCH is open, heavy, heavy traffic that this place gets. You imagine you're, you know, some rando from Germany or Iowa, whatever, like, oh my God, it's right. And all of a sudden, what? There's a giant beast in the road. You're gonna stop and look. You're gonna hit your brakes. The guy behind you may be seeing the same thing, maybe not looking at you. It's, you know, a recipe for danger. So um, that was sort of the nucleus of these guys as we'll hear is we should do something, right? We should, we, should, we should help, we should help interpret, but also we should create a safer space for the, people that want to see stuff, but also people that are just trying to commute on this corridor. So the management challenge was was non-existent, you know, 35 years ago or so, and all of a sudden this new biological success story made uh, something of a crisis. And so we can hear about uh, the, these cool species now and and, uh, and how they respond to the crisis. North Eastern studies since the 50s, uh, actually uh, since the 50s, first time using that word right now. Studied pretty intensively by Sanders, UC Sanders since the 60s. So see, these juveniles are here now. They're each, each one of these guys is here for about a month, and they're going to go back up north to feed. So this is one end of the range of, of this population. Eight to ten months of the year, they're up north where they feed. I'll show you a little bit. It looks like so these are uh, seals that have been satellite tagged actually up at the San in the uh, So we're down here. The males in blue feed along the coast. What's that called? The shallow water next to the coast. Uh, Continental shelf. 
because they feel they feed on the shelf. The females feed in the deep ocean, way, way out in the deep ocean. Uh, so they do a different migration than the males. You can see some females up here, but most of them are out here in the deep water. Um, and they do two of those migrations a year. Even the they've started tagging weaned pups. Actually, Cal Poly does that. Uh, they tag them down at uh, a small rookery down at Vandenberg, the beach town at Vandenberg. They tag a few of them down there. Even those seals do the, the pups that are only a few months old. They do it. One of them last year, or the year before, went all the way up here to the Gulf of Alaska and then back down. So they do shorter migrations, the young ones. How come they stay here instead of staying up north? Uh, they, yeah, the, the, uh, the pups need to be in a warmer environment to, to survive the early months of their life. Um, they, their, their pups Popping takes place on this beach because it's deeply a little, a little more sand than there is today. Uh, and also on the, the beach at the other end of the parking lot. The pups need the sand. They can't they don't learn to swim until they're a couple months old. Uh, this, this is our this was a six point six foot tide uh, about half an hour ago. This is a king tide and this the highest high tide that there the is. High tides, yeah. There were pups on this beach today, uh, and uh, months from now there might be some pups. Two months from now this beach will probably be pups. That's a bad time for pups because they don't swim, and sometimes they get washed in seen mothers push their pups back on the feet. Oh wow. But we do have pups around during the season. Are, are any of the bigger ones adults? Because they're quite large ones. Aerodynamic or <laughs> hydrodynamic. <laughs> Here too. It's like there a are males and females. Oh, okay. 